see over. Yep, no, that is true. You know, they, it's gotten so bad up there. They actually started a a, a school to uh, do the uh, maintenance uh, certification training, so <laughs> they could train their own mechanic. We got a school here over there, just in Beaver, I think it is, or Beaver County, uh, Pennsylvania, just north of Pittsburgh. We have a school that teaches aircraft, air traffic controllers, aircraft maintenance personnel, AMG mechanics. It, it has a whole realm of uh, of aviation uh, specialties that they uh, that they train. Because when I was working at the state uh, for the governor's office. I, don't, I wasn't on the radio then, I don't think, so I wasn't talking about it. But uh, we would get interns uh, during the summer months uh, from the school. They'd come and they'd work with our two AMPs uh, all summer long as part of their uh, education. Over. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like uh, like, like a, a pretty good thing. Yeah, they're uh, they're definitely busy. When they first uh, when he first started working with them up there, they actually had a lot of foreign students. That was before COVID. Uh, they were actually Chinese foreign students, and uh, after that, they kind of all went home. They're, they don't have them anymore. Well, I don't think the policy changed or just changing habits after the whole thing uh, came and went. Uh, but uh, yeah, this, this this school here, they, the uh, I, I don't know if they send the like, they probably don't send the students out further than they can drive to go participate. Otherwise, we send them down to Texas, huh? Indeed, indeed. Yeah, no, they, you know, all of those uh, students were recalled home. Uh, they don't send them anymore. So they decided not to do that. Anyway, uh, they're having a they're having a good time up there. You're 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 stuff like you're having a good time too. Between all the boats and everything else, no wonder you don't fly airplanes anymore. You know, I, I think about it once in a while, and then I think, you know, I really like flying, but the best part of flying was learning to fly. I tell you, all the years that, that I spent, the couple of years I worked on getting my private, and then going to naval flight training in Pensacola, and uh, oh, got transitioned to C-130s at Little Rock at the airport, and then just upgrading into aircraft commander for the Coast Guard and doing it for 10 years, you know, five of them, the Kodiak there. It's just, uh, that was really so much learning involved. I got the airlines and all of a sudden, uh, you know, hours and hours of boredom punctuated by, by, by moments of sheer terror, you know, and that's what flying just became. It wasn't so much, uh, instead of being the student, I, I was still learning, of course. You all learn, but I'm more the teacher trying keep everybody else that flew his cockpit with me from killing me over. <laughs> sure. Oh, you make me feel very comfortable to go on another, uh, another uh, flight somewhere. Sheer terror? Well, think about it. I mean, the, 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 oh, you want every flight to be boring, but it's just like, uh, it's like oh, put me to sleep. We, we went through more coffee in those transatlantic and trans-Pacific flights. There was always a pot, and... Uh, and you were just loading up, and then you'd, you'd get to your room, you couldn't get to sleep, and you'd have to do it again tomorrow. But well, you'd, you'd, you'd slam down a couple beers real quick to try to get to sleep before the phone rang to tell you to come out. The cab was waiting for you the next day. Over. <laughs> oh, goodness sake. Speaking of airlines, did you see the, of that, uh, uh, that 737 MAX 9, the Alaska Airlines plane? Uh, it looks like a door blew off of it, but they're saying it's a panel of some kind. Yeah, I saw a picture. It looked like an emergency door on the inside, but apparently it was just a panel off the fuselage. It came in the door section of the molding and everything on the inside out so that it looked like a door had pulled out. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't have liked to have been sitting at that window seat over. Uh, nope. Nope. Uh, for sure. That was, uh, I haven't obviously haven't seen any more since I've been on uh, on the Nez here, but uh, yeah, that was uh, quite the quite the eye opener. Those pictures of the side of that plane that was that was something. Yeah, those folks were extremely lucky there. That's those moments of sheer terror I'm telling you about. Yeah, uh, no doubt. No. Z three I whiskey five Charlie Golf Charlie. This is the U.S. Coast Guard Amateur Radio Net. We're chatting with our buddy Bill, who is a Coast Guard uh, aviator. Uh, if you haven't got an off <laughs> an airline pilot, and, and, and we're we're rethinking our trip to, to wherever it was we were going. 
Oh, yeah. Hey, don't, don't forget the uh, telephone technician also there. Over. Oh, no. I, yeah, I didn't. Uh, we, we need to talk more about the telephone technician part. That's what led me into this uh, this hobby for sure. Uh, when I first got up to Port Loran as a telephone technician in Seaman, Seaman SMTT, uh, the only way to talk from Port Clarence up on the Arctic Circle was uh, was ham radio. The only thing we had there was in 19 what was it 1970 I, I just recorded there. There was nothing else. We listened to ball games on the short wave. Uh, uh, the this radio was. Yeah. Get what it would call, uh, uh, you, they had all the ball games and stuff for the, for the service members, uh, but we listened to stuff on there and we listened to KNO, which was no AM radio station, and we had the shortwave AM radios to talk home. So the first thing I did when I got out there was start to work on my radio ticket over. Well, that way you control your own, uh, conversation. That's a, that, that was always, you know, we when we were on ocean stations out there uh, and, and running phone patches back in the day, uh, the radio men were your favorite buddies. That, uh, they would always bring us cookies and uh, coffee or, you know, sodas or whatever it was. Just to kind of uh, uh, try to get us to go out and get the radios going. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, I, when I was in Kodiak, we always had the chips out doing the ports of the laws treaties out around the donut hole out the Aleutian Chain where the fisheries, international fisheries was all going on. And, of course, half those guys lived uh, lived in the base housing. Their families were in the base housing there on Kodiak when they were out over Christmas and over Easter and over Thanksgiving. And so I had a crew of three or four of us that would go almost 24 hours a day over the holidays trying to man uh, man the radios and get phone patches so these guys could all get a chance to say hi to their wife kids over the holidays while they were out there on the ships over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was always uh, a lot of fun. We we had, um, uh, there was a station, I recall, in Southern California. It was part of a huge corporation, Howard Hughes. Uh, I'm not sure which one it was now. I forgot. But they had a, an 800 line, and they would use that. You could, after, after business hours, they would sit there and run phone passes where until you just couldn't see the microphone anymore. They were so good at that. And, of course, uh, it was always so hard. You'd have to find, you know, you had somebody up there that lived in New York, and you'd have to talk to somebody collect from California, you know, kind of expensive. Well, uh, those folks uh, at, at the Hughes Corporation, they just run the phone, just dial up the number and go. Everybody was extremely happy at that. Oh, that was great. Do you remember Family Telephone Service, FTS? I do. Yeah, my dad was the re- was in charge of our airport recruiting in Central Atlantic, Mid-Atlantic State back when I was up up there. When I was in boot camp when I was up there, and uh, I used to always, I, you know, i get a message, uh, Petty Officer Slobani, play to the radio room, and I'd go there and be my dad on a family telephone service trying to say hi. And this very good. Very good indeed. Well, it has been good chatting with you. I probably need to see if there's anybody else on here that wants to check in. It got kind of quiet there for a while, but maybe we rounded up a few more coasties that want to check in. So I better check on that. Good luck with your rehab program, and if we don't get a chance to talk to you next week, we'll miss you, but we'll say Happy New Year. Best 73 step of products, and Happy New Year to you, Dick, and anybody that might be listening. Uh, always enjoy the chat. Thanks for bringing me up to date on everything. W5 Charlie Golf Charlie. This is KZ3I. So long, Dick. All right, sir. KZ3I. Whiskey 5 Charlie Golf Charlie. U.S. Coast Guard Amateur Radio Net. Let's see if we have any other Coast Guard veterans wishing to check in. All right. November. I think it's November Mike 5. What's the rest of that? NM5W and KI6DGU, uh, stand by. NM5W, go ahead.
Yep. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Very good. Uh, November Mike Five Sierra Whiskey uh, W Five Charlie Golf Charlie. Uh, name here is Dick Delta India Charlie Kilo, and uh, we're in South Lake, uh the Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, and uh, yeah, I checked in on the net before, Scotty. It's uh, uh, cold and snowy up in Albuquerque. Oh, well, that's not so good. It's not snowing here, and it's but it is cool. It's, uh,
Well, right now you've got enough voltage in that battery to, to make the trip, huh? You're stronger off the back. Well, I'll give you a, a five by five, and uh, you know, perfect, perfect copy, no problem at all. Uh, say hello to anybody there with you. I will. All right. Well, Mick, the L7 UC is not on. I've got some searches to do. But uh, I'll tell him you said hello. All right. So, first, uh, I've got about that. And this is the radio. Where I don't even think that I can. I don't think I can go to the one. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a double seven off. Oh, yeah. Number one, November. Yeah, who's the other one? Number one, November. Good morning. Very good. Uh, let me get MD70 in here. MD70, uh, good morning. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there are other ones. Uh, better up here. Medical wires. The two surgeries. Good news. Uh, 